All right, everyone. So here's our last theorem for our vector calculus discussion, the divergence theorem. Okay, so now we're going to be relating those surface integrals to triple integrals, volume integrals through the enclosed space. Okay, so let's go ahead and share the doc cam and away we go. All right, so here we go. So now we're talking about the divergence theorem. Okay, and so again, what we're looking at is a way of rewriting a an integral, a surface integral in this case, to a different format, to a different type of integral that might be easier to evaluate. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about like converting, rewriting a surface integral. to a triple integral, right? Basically here, a volume integral. Okay, and so let's start off with the formal statement and then we'll get into the practice. All right, so for this divergence theorem, we're gonna let this three-dimensional space E be a simple solid, right? So no holes inside, no gaps, is one big block, if you will. Simple, solid region. And let S be the boundary surface, right? So all the faces, if you will. all the outer forms, the boundary surface of that region E, given with positive, that is outward, all right, out of the body, orientation. We're gonna let F be a vector field whose component functions have continuous partial derivatives. on an open region, right, all the setup for being able to use this theorem on the region that contains E, right? So in that three-dimensional space, all of our vector field components have continuous partial derivatives, okay? Then, now here's our big statement, when we take that surface integral of our vector field F over that surface, right, all those bases, all those bodies of it, we can rewrite that, we can equate that to this volume integral, this triple integral throughout that space E of the divergence of F d v, right? And remember from our discussion with the divergence earlier in this chapter, I think it was 16.4 or 16.5, I mean 16.5, the divergence are del dot f, right? Those partials dotted, right? So we're gonna get this scalar result, not a vector, not a vector anymore. Del dot f, dv. And again, a dv, it could be dx, dy, dz, or those iterations, or it could be r, dr, d theta, dz, cylindrical, or even spherical, rho squared, sine phi, d rho, d theta, d phi, and again, we can rearrange 
those components, depending on which coordinate system best fits that surface, that space E, right? And so again, we might get a case where maybe we're dealing with this problem, or maybe our surface could be like all these parts of the cylinder, right? The, the body of the cylinder. Cylinder, right? With top and bottom. So not just the middle body, but top and bottom as well. And so in that case, if we were going to construct that surface integral, we'd really have to think about, right? The body, the body, the base, and then the lid. But instead of having to deal with that, instead, we can think about that cylinder, that volume, with a little bit of dv living inside that cylinder, right? So setting up with cylindrical coordinates, we could do typical Cartesian rectangular, or if we start to talk like a sphere or a hemisphere, we can use spherical coordinates. All depend on which might be easiest to use in evaluation and setup of these limits, right? So this idea of instead of having kind of like our boundaries, the line integral, right? Those boundaries of separating now we can look at one singular, now a triple integral dealing with this body enclosed by these different surfaces, okay? And that's where the help is gonna come with our divergence then. And so it's kind of talking about when we start to take that vector field acting on all those different surfaces, accumulating what that force is, the accumulation of, of charge, whatever we might be measuring, we can look at that divergence, that flux of F, through that surface and equate those, okay? All right. So with that said, let's look at the calculation side of it. And let's work on this one. So for example, let's check out problem, I think it was number eight from the text. So number eight, where it says here, use the, diver the divergence theorem to calculate the surface integral. Service and of f dotted ds, right? And then this problem number eight, our vector field f of x, y, and z is given as x cubed plus y cubed for the i, y cubed plus z cubed for the j, and z cubed plus x cubed Okay, and S is the sphere with center at the origin and radius two. Okay, and so Looking at this, my ability to draw a sphere are not great. So bear with me in this drawing. So we have this sphere, center at the origin, radius two, right? And we're talking about the full sphere. So it's gonna go 
completely around. Okay, so we're going to get, there's our sphere. And again, I know I'm, my drawing is not wonderful, but hopefully we can see that, okay? And just to jump ahead slightly, right, when we're talking about spheres, the radius, instead of using an R, we're going to go rho equals 2, okay? And so when we're working on this, if we were to do that f dotted ds, the surface integral, we'd have to think about how we're going to parameterize this surface of that sphere, okay? I think it may be not impossible, but with that spherical notation, it may be a difficult task getting that into those components. First, once we start to see our functions, x cubed with y cubed, putting those in terms of this sphere, that parameterization may be a little bit tricky, okay? So instead, if we see, okay, well, I just have in that sphere, our space E, all that volume inside, right? The volume of that sphere, that space inside. What we can start to see then is that if there's this dV and I use spherical coordinates, we can do some rewriting here, right? So in this work, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared. There's our equation for our sphere. Okay. If we need it, x was equal to rho, I think it's sine b, cosine theta, there's our r, cosine theta, y was rho sine b sine theta, r sine theta, and then z is rho cosine b, and then there's our dv we have put together. And so in our problem here, since we have a sphere with radius 2, and we're going to look at the volume inside, for us, our rho is going to be going between zero to two. In terms of theta, we're going completely around that sphere, right? Our theta is measuring outwards, zero to two pi, completely around. And now for phi, phi, remember that's measuring down from the positive z axis, right? So since we're going all the way down, to the negative, right? We're going to go all the way down here. That's going to kind of sweep up one full side. Then we're going to rotate it that beta zero to pi. We're going to go from zero to pi. Okay. All right. So with that in mind, what we're really going to look at is that for that surface integral, we're going to rewrite it as this triple integral of E, the divergence of F D V now. When we talked about the DV up here, now the real work is finding that divergence, okay? And so this divergence of F, right? If F is this format, X cubed plus Y cubed, Y cubed plus Z cubed, z cubed plus x cubed, the divergence of f, that del dotted with f, that is my partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, dotted, right, basically acting on our vector field f, those components here, the sum of those different variables cubed. So that divergence of f, right, acting there. So we take the partial, so partial, with respect to x of x cubed plus 
y cubed plus the partial respect to y, y cubed plus z cubed, and lastly, the partial respect to z, z cubed plus x cubed. So our divergence of f, 3x squared plus 3y squared plus 3z squared, right? That partial respect to y, 0, or partial respect to x of y cubed is 0, partial z cubed with respect to y, 0, partial x cubed with respect to z, 0. We're left here. And then putting this together, Okay, move that away. If we're taking that dv in spherical, right? We had that notation that x squared plus y squared plus z squared was equal to rho squared. This becomes I'm going to leave this notation for a second. The divergence of f, 3x squared plus 3y squared, the scalar, right? Not a vector. That expression, dv. And so now, as I put this in, this is the same thing as having 3 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared, factoring out that 3. We can bring it out even further. But let me leave it inside for now. That's rho squared, that dv, another rho squared, sine phi, sine phi brought in. And I was keeping track of my order integration, d rho, d theta, d phi. We had done this before. Rho, 0 to 2. Theta, 0 to 2 pi. B, 0 to pi. And just cleaning up this a little bit, we can go in different orders of those integrals. If you want, since they're all constants, the order of integration is not going to make a difference. So we get 3 rho to the fourth, sine b, d rho, d theta, d phi. All right, so there's the setup. Going through that work, this computes simplifies down to this wonderful fraction, 384 over five pi. But that's the real discussion, getting to this integral to evaluate the tediousness from there, not too bad of an integral going through evaluating. But our discussion, how we can convert this surface integral to this volume integral, this triple integral, Right, what we would have done back in chapter 15 from our text. Thinking about that dv, since we have a sphere, it makes sense to go into spherical. Depending on that surface, we might leave it in rectangular, cylindrical, all depends on what surface is kind of what surface volume we're enclosing, I should say, what volume we're enclosing with our surfaces to accommodate those components. Okay. All right, if you have questions, definitely let me know.